You're not allowed to steal my sister. Doug respectfully said, Hello? Hello, Director Johnson. You don't have to be so polite. Emily used her voice. Doug was slightly surprised. It was a woman. To be able to have such great ability in New York City and buy all the shares of this company, which woman could it be? I've already seen the plan you proposed. Emily said in an orderly manner. Doug's heart skipped a beat. He did not have the energy to think about who this new boss of his was. All of his attention was focused on the seasonal plan. They had worked very hard on this project plan, and it had continued the style of Angel. After all, it was not the right time to innovate, and they just wanted to stabilize. However, the new boss might not think that way. After all, newbies like to change things and bring in their styles. Doug had already prepared a few excuses in his mind, preparing to use them to persuade her. Emily's voice sounded again. Recently, Prestige Co. had made more negative reports in the news. Angel Corporation should try its best to keep a low profile at this time. The public relations team doesn't need to do too much right now. They have one thing they must do, which is to try their best to label Prestige Co. as one of our consumer groups. As for this plan, I looked at it. It was the style of Angel before, so it isn't a problem. Just follow it. This is a special time for the company. Don't stress yourself too much. I won't ask you to change, at least for two seasons. And your system is very complete. I do not have any other requests. Do what you need to do. Doug stood rooted to the ground, almost suspecting that he had misheard her. How could their new boss be so good? Director Johnson, Emily said, because of personal reasons, I can't meet with everyone often. So the important task of stabilizing the mood of the company will be left to you. As for you all, I won't ask for too much right now. But if you need me, if you have any difficulties, you can call me at any time. Doug recovered from his shock. A warm current surged out of his chest and he became excited. All right, don't worry. Our team will bring you great benefits. Then I'll thank you in advance and look forward to the surprises you bring me. Emily gently hung up the phone. She sighed at the computer. There was still a risk. After all, she had never really gotten to know everyone on the team. Even if she came into contact with someone like Doug, she could only use videos and not show her faith. Apart from giving off a mysterious feeling, there was also the most fatal thing which was that he could not produce a sense of trust. Emily clenched her fist tightly and comforted herself that she was almost there. As long as she could get rid of Chloe and Adrian, there was no need to be so secretive. As for the matter of Angel Corporation, other than Marilyn, Emily naturally told Eric the first thing she knew. During this period, many major events happened one after another. Naturally, Adrian did not have a good time. He was busy dealing with the relationship between him and Prestige Co., and he also had to attend various gatherings. Therefore, he came back very late every night. Lorraine's whereabouts were even more suspicious. Emily found that she came back in a hurry several times. She left in a hurry in the morning, as if she was busy with something. At first, Emily did not take it to heart. After all, she had evidence that Lorraine and Adrian were together. But after a long time, Emily could not help but care. She asked Henry to follow Lorraine during this period and see what she was doing. Emily was clear on Chloe's side. The young family continuously targeted her, and her life was not much better. There was no one at home, and the most convenient thing for Emily was that she could relax and go to find Eric. For example... Now, she openly left via the main entrance and went to Eric's home. The people outside the Parker family home were very familiar with Emily, so they let her pass through easily. The little guy knew that Emily was coming and was guarding the entrance half an hour before she got there. When he saw Emily's figure, he immediately ran over. His small body swayed, and he went into Emily's arms. Emily, you're finally here! 
John rubbed against Emily's arms. His voice was sticky. He had missed her so much. His voice sounded a little like he had been wronged. I had something to do a few days ago, so I couldn't come to see you. Baby, kiss me. Don't be angry with me. Emily held John in her hands and gently rubbed his head. The little guy was wearing yellow pajamas today. The bright color made him even cuter. Emily felt that her heart was about to melt. But you went to see Daddy. That made me sad. Father still has a cake to eat. John only had biscuits. John said, his eyes almost turning red. Emily immediately turned her head and stared at Eric, who was standing behind them, not knowing what to say. Why is this man so childish? How about this? Next time, I won't make anything for your father. Instead, I will give you both cakes and cookies, okay? After a few days, I'll take you out alone. We don't want to bring that stinky dad of yours, okay? Emily comforted the jealous little guy. John immediately became happy and did not forget to look at his father complacently. Then Emily, can you sleep here tonight? John pulled Emily's sleeves. His tone was almost begging, especially those watery eyes. They looked innocent and pitiful. John wants you to a sleepover. Emily looked at the time. She came late today. She might even bump into Adrian and the others when she went back. She might as well stay out. So she pinched John's tender cheeks and said, Tonight, I will spend the night. That's great! John excitedly hugged Emily and then tightly hooked his arms around her neck. You're not allowed to bring Daddy. Emily instantly laughed. Father and son fighting for favor and it was cute and funny at the same time. Eric followed them. Under the moonlight, his handsome face was full of smiles. I will take you to my bedroom. John's small hands tightly held Emily's. He did not forget to look at Eric vigilantly, as if he was afraid that his father would take her away at any time. Emily smiled and followed him. Seeing that the two were about to leave him alone, Eric had no choice but to say, both of you stop right there. Don't steal her! John subconsciously hugged Emily's legs tightly. The sheets in your room have been washed. They are not dry yet. Tonight, go to my room to sleep. Eric coughed. The expression on his face did not change at all. John asked, What? His bed sheets were just fine. Poor thing. Eric looked over. The butler's face was very confused at first, but when he realized what was going on, he didn't know whether to laugh or cry. He asked someone to take out all the bed sheets in Liam's room. He was told to wash them even if they didn't need it. You are so tricky. John looked at his father in disbelief. He had never thought that his father was such a person. When he was young, he wanted to sleep in his room with him but was chased away. Now he could use such a childish move to steal his Emily. Yes, it was childish. John, who was about to celebrate his sixth birthday, felt that his father was childish. However, Eric was calm. His obsidian-like eyes fell on the two people holding hands. It's late. It's time to sleep. Emily looked at him helplessly and then lowered her head to comfort the little guy. Baby, let's go to your father's room. Tonight we will be sleeping together. Not only will I accompany you, but also your father. Okay? John looked up, pinched the corner of his clothes, and sighed. I want to sleep with you, not my stinky father. I know. Our baby is so sweet. Although Emily said that to comfort John since she was still sleeping in the same room with Eric, she seemed to be sleeping on the same bed. It was really strange. She thought to herself that she wasn't young anymore. She had experienced so many things, but every moment she was with Eric, everything they did together seemed to have a unique feeling. 
Even the smallest things made her feel moved. Emily finished washing up and changed into the pajamas Eric had prepared for her. They were pink with a collar. Emily did not know whether to laugh or cry as she put it on. She felt that she was instantly younger than 10 years old. When she left the bathroom, Eric and John sat on the bed, looking up at her at the same time. Wow! Emily is so pretty! Very pretty. The two of them said at the same time. Emily blushed and quickly changed the topic. Where's the dryer? Come here. Eric had already changed into his pajamas. He was dressed in black, which made him look even more handsome. At this moment, he was relaxed. The corner of his mouth curled into a faint smile as he waved at her. Emily felt that her soul was about to be taken away. She walked over obediently and sat in front of Eric. Eric stood up and walked in front of her. He bent his body slightly and picked up the hair dryer that he had prepared. He lifted Emily's hair with his fingers and turned on the hair dryer. He was very careful. His long fingers wrapped around her black hair like black ink on a white cloth. However, the most fatal thing was his eyes. It was a small matter, like blow drying her hair, but he was extremely serious. His deep eyes were full of concentration. However, he was not standing properly. Because he was so tall, Eric leaned his body slightly, getting closer and closer to her. Emily's heartbeat got faster and faster when she saw Eric like this. It was as if the warm wind did not blow on her hair, but her heart. It made her entire body heat up. Her eyes were glued to Eric's body. He should have gone downstairs to the bathroom while she was taking a bath. But the two of them had stayed in the room. This made Emily's mood wonderful. This kind of intimacy was even more tempting than kissing and hugging. After an unknown amount of time, Eric turned off the dryer and looked at Emily's hair with satisfaction. He smiled and rubbed her hair. It's dry. Emily did not say anything. Instead, she hugged his legs and leaned her head against his lower abdomen, gently rubbing against it. It was rare to see her acting like a child. Eric's heart skipped a beat. This rub. It was as if that strand of hair was stirring at the tip of his heart. Emily, you like daddy more? John's voice came from a small corner, sounding pitiful. Emily remembered that the little guy was still there. She immediately let go of Eric. Her face was red, and she was embarrassed. She did not know what to do. You only know now? Eric looked at his son. John was confused. He was only six years old. He was still a child. Why was he treated like this? He felt wronged, pitiful, weak, and innocent. Emily turned around and hit Eric in the chest. She then turned around and walked to a corner. She hugged John and comforted him. How could that be? I like John the most. John looked up. His face was young and tender, but his eyes were very serious. If my father and I fell into the sea at the same time, which one would you choose to save? The moment this fatal question was asked, Emily was instantly amused by him. She was laughing so hard that she was almost unable to catch her breath. But when she saw the little fellow's appearance, she stopped smiling. After hesitating for a while, she said, No matter what happens to you, I will protect you. No matter what comes your way, I definitely won't let you bear it alone. You are the best. John rushed into Emily's arms. His voice was soft. Okay, you have to go to school tomorrow. Get to bed early. Eric turned on the bedside lamp. The dim yellow light filled the entire room, making it especially warm. John obediently lay in the middle. Emily and Eric slept on both sides of him. Although the little guy usually disliked his father, at this moment, he held both of their hands tightly. His dark eyes sparkled in the night. Two big dimples hung on his face. John said softly, Good night. Good night, baby. 
Emily kissed his right cheek. Eric smiled and kissed his left cheek. Good night. John closed his eyes in satisfaction. His heart was so content that he felt like he had eaten countless sweets. Even the surrounding air was sweet. Emily lay on her side and watched the little guy close his eyes for a while. His breathing became even. She smiled and pinched his face. She could not help but kiss him again. Suddenly, her hand was held by someone. Emily looked up and saw Eric's hot and overbearing eyes. She felt as if her heart was being burned. Eric's hand hooked around her finger and placed it on his lips, gently kissing her. Good night. Eric's voice was low and hoarse. Emily took back her fingers and her entire body seemed to soften. She did not even dare to look at the man in front of her and could only whisper, Good night. Was his idea wrong? The next morning, when Emily woke up, John's small body had somehow slipped into her arms. She could not help but pinch the little guy's little hands and face. She felt relaxed and wonderful at the same time. Don't pinch me like that. He frowned and mumbled in a daze. I don't want to get up. I can't get up, even if I'm awake. Emily asked in a low voice. Emily? John instantly opened his eyes. When he saw that it was Emily, he immediately smiled happily. It is you! It's already dawn and your father is awake. Shouldn't you get up and go to school? Emily was about to grab her phone to check the time when John pestered her. I don't want to go to school. I want to be with you all day. Emily was reluctant to part with him. She thought that since Eric did not come to wake her, she might as well snuggle with John. Unexpectedly, after a few seconds, Eric pushed the door open and came in. Seeing the two of them, he knew they were awake, so he said, The food is ready. Get up. John poked his head out and stretched out a finger. He begged, One more minute, can I? Emily's heart melted. She hugged his body tightly. I have the final say. It's fine, even if you want two more minutes. Eric looked at the two of them helplessly. Emily knew she could not go on like this for much longer, so she pulled John, who was reluctant to part with her, out of the bed. After changing his clothes and finishing his meal, Eric drove him to school, and then he dropped Emily off near her home. What do you plan to do next? Eric leaned closer and asked in a low voice. Emily unconsciously hooked his finger and said with a smile, Go back to Cooper's. She had decided to return to the Coopers a while ago, but Larry's matter had been stirred up for so long. If she did not return now, she did not know how long it would take. Do you have any specific plans? Eric looked at their hooked fingers and looked at the woman beside him with a smile. Emily smiled slyly. Yes, let's see if Adrian takes the bait. Eric liked her proud and confident look. He smiled. Then he pulled Emily into his arms and kissed her. In the narrow space inside the car, the atmosphere became warmer. Adrian came out of Cooper's building and saw the car that was waiting for him. He walked over. However, Mark was not in the car, like in the past. Instead, he stood outside the car. His brows were tightly knit. He spoke into his phone with a huff and puff. In the end, he said with hatred, He deserved it. Forget it. Ignore him. Then Mark hung up the phone. He looked up as if he had just seen Adrian. He was shocked at first and then immediately returned to the driver's seat. Adrian, I'm sorry. I just picked up the phone a moment ago. I didn't pay attention to the time. It's okay. Adrian nodded slightly. However, something had happened to Mark before, so he had to be careful. He pretended to be careless and asked, is something wrong at home? Mark usually did not talk much. He said as little as possible. He never said anything that he should not say. This was also what Adrian liked about him. Today, it seemed like he had been holding something in for a long time. Finally, he found someone to talk to. 
He kept talking. I have a cousin who has been pampered by his family since he was young. Uh, he treated a good person like a piece of trash. His grandfather has some money on his side and also loves his grandson from the bottom of his heart. Even though he is already so old, he still pampers him. He even prepared to leave his inheritance to this cousin of mine. But how can the other children of the old man just let it go like this? They thought of a way to arrange for my cousin to be in front of the old man. Then in just a short week, the old man has seen through my cousin's future. Forget about the inheritance. I don't even want to see it now. Mark clicked his tongue again. You deserve it. This man, before anything happened, no one could see through him. We still have to focus on what we're going through. At that time, we'll understand everything. He seemed to be saying that it was not intentional. After saying that, he scratched his head in embarrassment. I'm sorry, Adrian. I just don't think my cousin can live up to his expectations. I don't know what to do, so don't mind me if I'm talking too much. Adrian didn't answer, but he seemed to have heard what he said. He did not say anything on the way to Cooper's. When he returned to the Cooper home, Adrian sat in the living room and took out a cigarette from his pocket. He lit it and put it in his hand. The smell of nicotine spread out along with the fog. Adrian narrowed his eyes, and his mind became much clearer. He had always been on guard against Emily's arrangements. That was why he had arranged for her to stay in an unremarkable branch company like women's wear. The further away she was, the less threatening she would be. But even so, Adrian was still worried. That was why he first sent a private detective to follow her. He also arranged for Liam to report everything. Then he sent Frank to probe him. The results naturally reassured him. However, the unforeseen event was that ever since Emily arrived, women's wear's performance had improved a lot. Moreover, their overall strength had increased. The current women's wear was no longer an insignificant existence. Adrian knew the truth because people like Adam would complain, which showed how stupid Emily was. But what about those old foxes from the Coopers who refused to give up? If they thought that Emily did all this, would they have other thoughts? Today, Mark's words had entered his heart. This made him wonder if his thoughts had been wrong all along. So what if he let Emily go far away? The further she went, the more those old fellows did not give up and were restless. But what if he put the stupid girl in front of them? Let Emily make more mistakes and let the old fellows realize that this woman was not worth it. At that time, he would bring it up and officially take over Cooper's. Wouldn't that be more successful? Adrian took a deep breath of smoke and then pressed the cigarette butt hard into the ashtray. Of course, this decision couldn't be made easily. If he wasn't careful, then all his previous arrangements would go to waste. Adrian sat in the living room for a while and saw Emily coming back. It was already late autumn. She was wearing a camel-colored windbreaker. Inside was a black sweater, and her delicate face was becoming more and more beautiful. At this moment, she was holding a few flowers in her hands. The beautiful roses in her arms were unexpectedly outdone. He thought he could manipulate her. Adrian, you're back early today. Emily took the flowers and slowly walked to the middle of the living room. Adrian stopped sizing her up and whispered, Where did you go? A while ago, Emily was so scared that she did not go out of the house because of Larry. Adrian himself was also very troubled, so he did not pay much attention to it. However, Emily was indeed scared at that time, so she did not run around. I saw that the weather was good today, so I went out to buy some flowers. Is that okay? Emily smiled and held the flowers in front of her. Adrian could not help but mock this woman in his heart. Until now, he only knew how to buy flowers and admire flowers. It was indeed her style from before. Even after six years in prison, she still could not change it. Even the last bit of worry in his heart no longer existed. 
It's been a long time since you went to women's wear. Also, you mentioned before that you don't want to go. What do you want to do next? Do you have any plans? Adrian smiled politely. His tone was neither hurried nor slow, but his eyes became sharp. Emily was stunned for a moment. Even the flowers in her hands drooped down. This question seemed to put her in a difficult position. Her facial features wrinkled together, and the moving smile disappeared. Adrian's reaction was very satisfying, and she was not in a hurry. He just sat on the sofa and waited for her to reply. I... I don't know. Emily was discouraged and lowered her head. Am I useless? The thought of going to work made me feel uncomfortable all along. I was afraid of making mistakes and being looked down upon. Those eyes are too uncomfortable. Adrian stood up at this time. He slowly walked over and touched her head. Last time, I did not think it through. I made you stay so far away from me. Even if I wanted to take care of you, I couldn't spare some time for you. Can you come to Cooper's this time? Cooper's? Emily's eyes widened in surprise. She quickly shook her head and waved her hand. I can't. There are so many powerful people in Cooper's. I'm going to... Wouldn't it be more embarrassing? Besides, this is related to your reputation. The more she tried to escape, the more satisfied Adrian was. He was even wondering why he did not think of this move earlier. If he had placed Emily in Cooper's earlier, those old fellows who do not give up might have all come to seek refuge from him. I'm fine. If you come over, I'll take care of you. Adrian lowered his voice and tried to persuade the woman in front of him. He wanted to see her walk step by step into his trap. Emily took a deep breath, as if this decision was difficult for her. She said, Adrian, give me one night to think about it, okay? No problem. Adrian smiled sweetly. Cooper's is your home. I am only managing it for you and your dad. You don't have to be scared. Emily looked touched. You are so good. If dad knew you were so good to Cooper's, he would be very happy. Adrian patted her shoulder. I should do this. When Emily returned to the bedroom, her face instantly turned expressionless. After a while, she lifted the corner of her mouth and revealed a smile. Adrian thought that he could manipulate her, but he did not know that she was familiar with him. All of this was already within her plan. It seemed that Mark's words had indeed been heard by this man in his heart. Adrian wanted to be suspicious. It was not good to have a good personality. Fortunately, he could be on guard. The bad thing was that as long as he grasped this person's personality, he could easily make use of it. The next day, Emily seemed to have mustered up a lot of courage and walked shakily to Adrian's side. Adrian, I thought about it all night last night. I didn't do anything for you and Cooper's. My ability can only bring you trouble, but I also want to do what I can. If you were by my side, I will feel much more at ease. The meaning of her words was very clear. Even if she went, she would need Adrian to take care of her. Adrian immediately comforted her. Don't worry, nothing will happen to you if you stay by my side. I have been a little busy these days. Come with me to Cooper's next week. Think about what position you want to take these few days. Emily wanted to arrange a position herself, but she was afraid to say too much. Dealing with Adrian, if she accidentally said something wrong, it would immediately alert him. Especially the selection of positions, as it was quite crucial. Thus she shook her head, her eyes ignorant. I don't know about all of this. Adrian, if you don't mind the trouble, can you help me choose... Okay. Adrian smiled and turned to drink his coffee. The matter was settled, just like that. Emily immediately called Adam and told him about this matter. Naturally, the other party was very happy. Adam, I originally wanted you to come back with me, but Women's Wear's current development is not bad, especially with regards to the factory line. I still need you and Karen to help me keep an eye on them.
Don't worry about that. Leave everything on women's wear side to the two of us. They are your backing. Adam was in a good mood. When he spoke, his voice was full of smiles. Thank you. Emily sincerely thanked him. Don't say that. Adam sighed. Thank you. You gave me hope. I hope I can see you and your father take over Cooper's one day. Emily's nose turned sour. She clenched her fists. Yes, Adam. Me too. She would not let them wait too long. Time passed quickly. After dealing with Larry's matter, Emily suddenly realized that the audition process for the painting competition was almost complete. She quickly went online to check the latest developments. Coincidentally, just as she was checking, the official message for the painting competition was sent to her email. Emily's heart tightened, and she immediately looked at it carefully. The email did not mention too many details. It only said that the painting that Emily sent had passed the initial review, but it did not pass the audition. Now, the official had divided the works that had passed the preliminary review into 50 groups. Each group had 10 people. These 10 people had to go to the Bullard Building in New York City at the same time to interview each of them. Each group could only produce three people who had advanced to the next level. Emily could not help but feel that this rule was too strict when she saw it. When the official announcement was made, there were roughly 50 to 60,000 participants in the audition nationwide, including overseas. However, only 500 people had passed the initial audit, and this was not even the qualifiers. You're very famous. According to this rule, only 30 people would pass the auditions. Emily took a cold breath. This was going to be an extremely difficult competition. The conditions were so strict that it made many people feel intimidated. Emily felt very lucky to be able to enter these 10 groups. She looked at the time that the officials had arranged for her. It was this weekend, which meant that there were still three days left. Her heart beat rapidly again. It was impossible to say that she was not nervous. This competition was to prove herself, and it was also what she wanted to do. The top judge of the competition was Mr. Jameson. How many people dreamed of getting his award? Three days later, Emily came to the Bullard Building alone. She was dressed in black and looked very low-key. Most importantly, she was still wearing a big mask. Only a pair of lively eyes could be seen. She did not use her real identity to participate in the competition this time. It would have been even more impossible for her to participate without covering anything. After all, this was still New York City. People came and went, so it was inevitable that they would not be discovered. Emily followed the official address and went to the third floor. When she arrived at the scene, she saw that the other members of the group were already waiting. She quickly sat in the corner and clenched her fists in excitement and nervousness. However, the moment she appeared, the other people immediately looked over her with covetous eyes. Their group was the first to begin the current elimination round. Therefore, among the ten people present, each of them knew that only three of them could successfully advance. There were only so many people and the competition pressure was so intense. The way they looked at each other was probing and filled with hostility. Emily was the only one who did not show her face. She only showed a pair of eyes, and no one could tell who she was. Hence, she attracted a lot of attention. At this time, a few people stood up and moved closer to the woman with long curly hair sitting at the front. They asked respectfully, Are you the famous Mrs. Robinson? I am so excited to see you in person. Mrs. Robinson calmly smiled, but her eyes were hanging up. She lazily said, It is me. It's my honor to be in the same group as you. Mrs. Robinson will be the first to advance this time. Mrs. Robinson, can you sign an autograph later? My niece is a big fan of yours. If she has your autograph, who knows how happy she will be. Among the ten people, more and more people surrounded them. 
In the end, only Emily and the remaining man and woman did not move. Emily did not know this Mrs. Robinson, but from the looks of it, she must be a very powerful person. She silently took out her phone and checked. Indeed, she was a famous figure in the recent painting class. She heard that she was self-taught and that she was broadcasting and painting on the internet. Coupled with her beautiful appearance, she had gained quite some fans. As for the collection of paintings that she had practiced with famous artists, they had been sold for a million dollars. She had suddenly become a famous, beautiful artist. Emily closed her phone. This Mrs. Robinson was indeed very beautiful. Moreover, those art collections showed that her foundation was not bad. No wonder she was so popular here. Just at this time, Mrs. Robinson suddenly looked at Emily and pointed her finger. That masked person, are you also a painter? Could it be that she was afraid of making a fool of herself so she wore a mask? Could it be that you can't afford to lose this? When she said this, the other few people laughed out, one after another. At the same time, they looked at Emily with interest. Emily quietly slanted her eyes. She did not want to cause such a big commotion, so she suddenly coughed a few times and deliberately pretended to sound hoarse. I caught a cold and I was afraid to spread it to everyone. I'm sorry. It would be best if it was like this. Otherwise, it does not matter if you are famous or not. This time, you definitely won't be able to enter the top three. That's why you might as well not show your face, in case you lose face. The long-haired girl played with her hair and said slowly, Emily instantly frowned. Even the others looked at Mrs. Robinson blankly. They did not know why she was so sure that other people would not be able to advance. Mrs. Robinson was also surprised. She looked at everyone with an expression of looking like an idiot. She even covered her mouth. Oh my God, don't tell me you think you can advance. What are you thinking? She sized them up and said slowly, but I can't blame you guys for this. Young people are always naive. She thought that it was not easy for her to reach this step. However, I have always been straightforward. Don't mind me. Someone couldn't help but ask. Mrs. Robinson, just say it. Mrs. Robinson raised her eyebrows. I won't say it. I won't hide it from you guys. The painting I made, even Haley Michelle agreed to it. So this time I will be able to break through. As for the remaining two. As she spoke, she pointed at the short-haired girl who had been silent by the side. That is Mr. Hendrick's last prodigy. Don't look at how young she is. She has won a lot of big awards overseas. Look at how ignorant you are. You don't even know this. You still dream of advancing? When Mr. Hendrick's closed-door prodigy came out, Everyone immediately held their breath and looked at the silent girl in shock. Although this Mr. Hendrick might not be the most powerful person in this painting class, as long as one had the last name Hendrick and could be called a teacher, they were all people from the Hendrick family. Furthermore, which person in the Hendricks family wasn't famous and had an extremely high status? If they could be their last prodigy, it could be seen how powerful they were let alone winning an award abroad. After the others were surprised, they were disappointed, but they couldn't accept it. Then isn't there only one person left? We still have a chance. Mrs. Robinson sneered. You are not happy to say that you are not experienced. <sighs> if I were you guys, I wouldn't be participating in this competition. I don't even know the market price. Isn't coming here to humiliate me? That man from Benji Lakes, who had participated in the French competition a few days ago and won the prize. You guys don't know each other? Benji Lakes? The crowd exclaimed and looked at the man. The most popular illustrator in the country had won numerous awards at a young age, and his reputation had spread all over the country. Other than being astonished, the rest of the people were dejected. They were lamenting their bad luck that they had met the death team. Now, who would dare guarantee that they would be able to advance? Mrs. Robinson seemed to have seen enough of a joke. 
she crossed her arms in front of her chest and asked unhurriedly, Speaking of teacher, which are you from? Every circle was this big. To be able to reach this step from 40 to 50,000 people, there must be some ability. Moreover, the teacher represented his own identity and background. Episode 166 I Really Don't Care For example, for the short-haired girl from earlier, even if no one knew what prize she had won or what famous paintings she had drawn, as long as they knew that her teacher's last name was Hendrick, her status would naturally be much higher than theirs. The others became modest and introduced themselves one after another. Mrs. Robinson casually listened. These teachers were more or less famous, but in terms of qualifications and reputation, they were still a little lacking. She pursed her lips in disdain and sneered. She raised her eyebrows at Emily, who kept her head down silently. What about you? You haven't spoken just now. Don't tell me you don't even know who we are. Emily paused. She did not know who they were. Because she had not come into contact with this circle for many years. Back then, her teacher had said that every circle was chaotic. When you came into contact with the core things, it was not all the famous artists that you envied who were talking about how to paint, but how everyone would benefit under the constraints of their capital. So even back then, Emily did not have a concrete understanding of this outside world. But now, she knew that Mrs. Robinson was deliberately making things difficult for her and could not refute it. She just shook her head and smiled, but did not say anything. It was impossible to say that she was not worried. According to what Mrs. Robinson said now, the three of them either became famous early or had a deep background. However, each group could only advance by three people. Emily took a deep breath. She was not willing. So, who is your teacher? Mrs. Robinson did not let it go. Emily was speechless. When she learned how to draw back then, she did not know what her teacher's name was. However, thinking about it, it was not that famous. That person had always been free and easy. What he drew, what he did, everything depended on his mood. Thus, she continued to shake her head and softly said, my teacher is a friend of my father. We all only know how to draw. Mrs. Robinson was stunned at first and then laughed out loud. Then it is not easy for you to reach this step. The others were originally worried about whether they were not as famous or had a background like the others. However, when they heard that there was someone worse than them and that even their teacher was not famous, they immediately straightened their backs and looked at Emily with disdain. I think she should be the first to be eliminated. I've thought about that in the past. Everyone relies on their relationships. She is a person without anything. How can she even have the face to come? Otherwise, she's wearing a mask. I guess she's just afraid of losing face. At this moment, the short-haired girl suddenly raised her head and said impatiently with a cold face, Shut up! You guys are very noisy. The others looked at each other. Although they were embarrassed in front of everyone, no one dared to say anything else. After all, the Jameson family was behind them. In their circle, who dared to offend the people of the Jameson family? Emily looked gratefully at the short-haired girl, but she still lowered her head and looked at her phone, as if she did not like the noise. She then put away her thoughts and held her fingers uneasily, trying hard not to tremble. Very soon, the interview officially began. For fairness's sake this time, it was the live announcement to see if she would be promoted. Therefore, everyone present was especially nervous. The short-haired girl and Benji were called in one after another, after the two of them came out, the other few people, other than Mrs. Robinson, all had pale faces. Once these two big shots went in, it meant that there was probably only one spot left. No one wanted to reach this step, but they were easily eliminated. But there was only one spot left. 
How could they compete with a popular person like Mrs. Robinson? Sure enough, after the few people who went in later, their expressions changed when they came out. But no one left. They just stood there and waited. What was the final result? Ah, oh, this is too difficult. I thought you would ask professional questions. But what are those questions? That's right. That's right. Anyway, I don't have any hope. Stay here and see how Mrs. Robinson is doing. She is so powerful, so there is no question. Very quickly, only Mrs. Robinson and Emily were left for the interview. The staff member announced that Mrs. Robinson would go in for the interview first. Hands. The others all looked at Emily with sympathy. She is too pitiful. Is it possible for Mrs. Robinson to go in like this? Will. She did not even give the interview a chance. People like her should know when she comes that she is just a person to gather the number of people. Could it be that she's still holding on to hope? Emily took a deep breath. These people's words kept entering her ears. It was impossible to say that it did not affect her mood. Moreover, she was really worried that she didn't even have the chance to enter the interview. About five minutes later, Mrs. Robinson walked out of the meeting room. There was a smile on her face and she looked very confident. Mrs. Robinson, you are so happy. There should be no problem this time, right? Mrs. Robinson smiled lazily. Doing something like this on purpose was just a small matter to her. My performance was average, but the judges looked very satisfied. Promotion is not a problem. At this time, it was Emily's turn to go in. Mrs. Robinson looked at her mockingly. You don't want to give up until you reach the end. If it were me, I would leave now to save myself from losing. Emily looked at her coldly, but did not say anything. Before she entered the meeting room, she took a deep breath to keep those negative emotions away from her as much as possible to avoid being affected. Three people were sitting in the conference room. The two people in front seemed to be teachers this time. The one in the back was dressed in black and had no expression on his face. Only his eyes emitted a sharp light. Emily was almost certain at the first moment that this man was the person with the highest status among the three of them. The two judges looked at Emily with no expectations. They felt that today's interview should be over. Mrs. Robinson's performance just now was not bad, and the three candidates had already been decided. They were not interested in Emily. When Emily's work was brought out, the two of them were first stunned. Then they frowned unwillingly. How did such a work pass the first round of review? Look at how many years ago this method was last used. And this color does not conform to modern aesthetic standards at all. What is this? Isn't it a waste of our time? Emily's heart skipped a beat when she heard this. But she still calmed herself down and looked up at the two judges. Although the two of them were very dissatisfied, they still had to go through the procedures. The two of them looked at each other and the plump one frowned and asked, Have you not paid attention to our line of work for a long time? I see that your colors, including your drawings, are all a style from a long time ago. Emily did not intend to hide it. Instead, she told the truth. Yes, I took a break for six years. You're not as good as me. Six years? That person was shocked and looked even more disdainful. I think I may be too old for this. Do you see Mrs. Robinson who went out just now? She is only 20 years old this year. She has already reached her current status. Yet you gave up on your own six years. Now that she had appeared again, she didn't study any new techniques or combinations. To be honest... I don't even know how you got in here. Emily took a deep breath and was about to speak when that person took another step forward. Let's do this today. You definitely won't get a chance to do this. Wait! Emily fiercely pinched her palm and forced herself to calm down. She looked up at the two judges and her gaze was firm. I only know now. So the painting industry that you speak of also has to keep up with the times. Then tell me, 
What about Picasso and Van Gogh? Their work becomes more valuable as time goes by. The fat judge became impatient. Are you talking about Picasso now, or are you Van Gogh? Don't you know who you are and what you are capable of? You don't understand what I mean. I mean, you only rely on some techniques in what you think of the fashionable color matching to say that my painting is not good. I think you're being biased. Emily did not want to be outdone. This was the first time the judges had seen such a thing. They were already impatient, to begin with, but now they were even more furious. I don't want to hear you say so much. Are you the judge, or am I? Whatever I say goes. Now get out of here, and we're about to announce the results. And I can tell you with certainty that it's impossible for you. Emily clenched her fist tightly. She looked at the work that she had spent almost a whole week to finish, and looked at the two judges unwillingly. What are you looking at? Hurry up and leave. Just as the judge finished his sentence, the man in black behind him spoke. Wait, I have a few questions for you. Now it was the two judges' turn to look at each other. If you think color and skill are not important, then tell me, what is the most important thing in a painting? The sharpness in the man's eyes was still there, but a hint of interest also appeared in his eyes. The two judges looked at each other. They did not know whether he was deliberately making things difficult for the woman in front of them, or giving the woman in the mask a chance. But no matter what, with their identities, there was no way to stop them. Emily straightened her back and looked at the drawing board in front of her. Her drawing method was indeed not the most popular nowadays. Her color matching was not even that bright and eye-catching. This painting only had three colors, black, white, and gray. But there were all the emotions she wanted to express. So she took a deep breath and said in a deep voice, Painting is creation, and it's also a form of expression, expressing the artist's state of mind and understanding at that time. Although techniques are required to express, and colors are required to embellish them, if these two are placed above direct expression, it would be somewhat inverted. In a painting, the most important thing is still the creator's soul. For example, if a work was created according to the techniques and colors that the two teachers had mentioned earlier, even though it could be sought after, it could also be easily defined as a good work. But in my eyes, it can't compare to the family happiness drawn by my son's immature brush. Just as she spoke, the judge snorted in disdain. The man in black nodded. Okay, I got it. You can go out. We will inform you as soon as we have discussed the results. Emily was like a deflated ball. Her eyes could not help but become sad. She looked at her painting. Although she was not willing to accept it, she still left. When she came out, Mrs. Robinson was sensitive to the seriousness on her face. Her heart became more and more proud. <sighs> I told you. Instead of going in and asking for trouble, why don't you go in? Mrs. Robinson raised her eyebrows. Her tone was full of sarcasm. Emily coldly looked at her. Now that the interview had ended, although the result was not good, the psychological pressure had lessened a lot. It is my right to enter or not. It is not your place to mumble to me here. Also, since you're certain that you can enter, why is there so much nonsense? Do you feel that you don't have that much confidence, so you're looking to go after me? Mrs. Robinson was stunned on the spot. Originally, she thought that this woman wearing a mask was some soft person, but she did not expect her to be able to retort. She pointed at Emily's nose in anger and was about to open her mouth to curse. But when she realized her current identity, she almost choked. Mrs. Robinson, don't lower yourself to this person's level. She felt that she could not win and wanted to vent her anger on you. You are magnanimous. If you win later, that will be the time to slap her face. That's right. That's right. Don't look at how she is talking about you now. She might be envious of you in her heart. Emily did not want to hear this group of people fawning over her, so she simply found a corner to sit down. She did not want to leave. Even if she knew the result, 
she still wanted to hear it personally. It could be considered as an explanation for herself. Ten minutes later, the staff walked out with a list in hand. The ten participants all held their breaths and looked at the list in her hand. Next, I announce that Benji will be the one to advance in this competition. Amanda Myers Amanda Myers was the short-haired girl from before. The advancement of these two didn't cause any surprise. After all, this was only natural. Shortly after, Mrs. Robinson squeezed to the front. Her face carried an exaggerated smile. The only thing left was that she did not take the initiative to receive the qualification certificate that passed the audition. There is still the last person to advance. Smith. What? Who is Smith? Teacher, did you say the wrong name? That's right. We don't have anyone called Smith here. Everyone present was shocked, especially Mrs. Robinson. The smile on her face was still stiff, but there was not a trace of blood on her face. Emily squeezed in from the crowd. Although there was still shock on her face that she did not have the time to take it away, she was even happier. She hurriedly received the qualification certificate and bowed deeply. Thank you. Mrs. Robinson looked at Emily in disbelief. What if she had made a mistake just now? She might have made a mistake. But now? No. How could it be this woman who wore a mask and wasn't even famous? It should be her. Are you mistaken? That qualification certificate should be mine. It should have the name Mrs. Robinson written on it. Mrs. Robinson awkwardly grabbed the staff member's hand. Let go. The staff member frowned and shook it off. We checked the list with the three judges before we got it. There will not be any problems with this list. Miss, you are not as skilled as me. Don't look for other reasons. His brain heated up. Mrs. Robinson was stunned on the spot, while the others looked at Emily in shock. No one expected that such a person whom they looked down on would defeat Mrs. Robinson and obtain this qualification certificate. Could it be that this person was not who she said she was? But it also didn't seem like it. At this moment, someone suddenly whispered, Looks like Mrs. Robinson is not as good as she claimed to be. Yeah, that might be it. To be honest, she is just an internet celebrity. The reason why she's so popular is that she sells people's equipment, and because of her face. Well, it's a slap in the face now. She's going to lose a lot of followers this time. Emily did not care what they said anymore. She just looked at the qualification certificate in her hand, and her eyes turned red. She originally thought that there was no hope, but she did not expect that the final result would be her. At this time, the judges walked out. That slightly fat person did not look at anyone and walked straight to Emily's side. His attitude formed a sharp contrast with his previous one. I'm sorry, I was not very professional just then. Emily was stunned. She did not understand why this person had changed so quickly. The fat judge could not say anything. Who would have thought that such a piece that did not think highly of would be chosen by Mr. Huntsman himself when he decided on the first round? If he knew, he would confess to the masked man in front of him. After all, he was someone that Mr. Huntsman could take a fancy to. In this circle, he was the one with the most potential to become a god. The fat judge could not say much, so he went to meet up with the others. Emily was not clear about all this, but the results were exactly what she wanted. She calmed down and went to the first floor to prepare to leave the Bullard building. But at this time, the first floor was full of people. Emily was squeezed in between a group of people and pushed to the front. After she finally stabilized herself, she looked and saw that it was Mr. Huntsman who had come and drawn such a large crowd. His appearance naturally attracted a lot of reporters. Many of them moved out, one after another. Although they did not yet become famous, they still wanted to see Mr. Huntsman's fan. Emily was naturally very excited as well. After all, she was a celebrity among celebrities. Moreover, Mr. Huntsman himself looked much friendlier than in the photos. 
His facial features were kind. Although he was old and his face was full of wrinkles and age spots, his posture was valiant and his smile was sincere. He even had the demeanor of an immortal. Emily felt that Mr. Huntsman was especially amiable. She was stunned when she saw him. The person behind her suddenly pushed him. Emily did not have time to react. She twisted her ankle and fell in the direction of Mr. Huntsman. Mr. Huntsman quickly supported Emily. However, the moment he saw her, his expression changed. After he was surprised, his eyes turned red. Wait, is that... is that my friend? Emily realized that she had gotten into trouble. She quickly got up from Mr. Huntsman's arms and scratched her head in embarrassment. I'm sorry, thank you. She left in a hurry and did not notice the complicated look in Mr. Huntsman's eyes. Mr. Huntsman kept staring at her back, muttering the word, Wait. Her eyes were too familiar. But was that who he thought it was? Mr. Huntsman regained his senses. His heart felt as if it had been pricked by a needle. It hurt so much that his entire body twitched. Emily escaped from the crowd. She patted her chest and let out a breath, but she could not help but look at Mr. Huntsman in the crowd. She touched the qualification certificate in her hand. Perhaps one day, the two of them could meet more formally. Emily left the Bullard building. The first thing she did was to tell Eric the good news. She made a phone call and could not hide the excitement in her voice. I got the qualification to advance. Out of ten people, only three can advance. I thought I had no hope. Eric smiled dotingly and said softly, What do you want to eat tonight? I want to eat the food you make. Emily found a big tree to lean against. She did not feel anything special just now. She just wanted to call Eric to tell him about this. However, when she heard the other party's low pitch and the smile on the ending note, she felt as if her heart had been stabbed. She wanted to see Eric at this moment. Are you at the office? Emily suddenly asked. Yes, there is a meeting in the afternoon. Eric put down the documents in his hands and focused on the phone call. Can I come over now? There's nothing important, it's just that I want to see you. Emily's voice became softer and softer as she spoke. She didn't even know what was wrong with her. She spoke her mind shamelessly. I'll come and pick you up. Eric's voice suddenly became low. If one listened carefully, one could still hear some anxiety. No need, no need. When I arrive, I will have Damon come down and bring me up. I don't want to cause such a big commotion like last time. Emily said softly. Okay, you stay where you are. I will have him drive to pick you up. Eric was ready to call Damon to prepare the car. However, Emily immediately stopped him. Don't. This way it will take a lot of time. I want to see you as soon as I can. I will get there myself. After she finished speaking, she immediately hung up the phone. She was embarrassed to face Eric's reaction. Although she was shy, she did not slow down at all. Emily quickly stopped a taxi by the roadside and gave him the office address. She kept looking at the time on her phone. Once she was sure that she would be able to see Eric soon, she was in high spirits. Fortunately, there was not much traffic, and they got there quickly. The driver had just parked the car when Emily paid and got out of the car immediately. She hurried to Parker's office building, but suddenly saw Eric standing outside against the side of the building. He was wearing a black coat and a white turtleneck sweater. The sun shone on his hair and made his black hair look brown in the light. It resonated with the black coat. Compared to his usual seriousness, he was especially fashionable today. At this time, Eric had already seen Emily. He curled his lips and smiled. He stood where he was and did not move, but opened his arms. Emily's heart was suddenly hit, and her brain heated up. She did not care whether this was outside the Parker building, or whether people were coming and going. At this moment, she did not mind or care about anything. She rushed towards Eric's embrace. Emily was surrounded by Eric, and she smiled in satisfaction.
blinded dog eyes. Eric rubbed the top of her hair and kissed it lovingly. Emily smiled like a content child. She let Eric hug her and kiss her. After a while, she looked up and asked with a smile, Why didn't you let Damon come down to pick me up? Have you been waiting a long time? Eric pinched her face. Because I want to see you as soon as possible, too. Emily rubbed his palm intimately. The two of them looked at each other and laughed at the same time. I don't want to go upstairs from the main entrance. There must be a lot of people watching. Emily thought of the last time she came and could not help but feel her scalp tingle. Eric held her hand and pulled her close tightly. Come with me. He held her hand and walked to the office's back door. Emily could not help but laugh. She was embarrassed to have Eric take her to the back door of his office building. The two of them went upstairs and entered Eric's office. Before they could say anything, someone knocked on the door. Eric frowned. His eyes were filled with dissatisfaction. He said lightly, Come in. Damon pushed the door open and entered. When he saw someone wearing a mask inside, he was stunned. He immediately realized it was Emily. When he saw the expression on Eric's face, he wanted to go back in time so he could stop himself from knocking on that door. But since he had already entered, he had to brace himself and say, The meeting will start in ten minutes. You have a meeting? Emily asked in surprise. Eric wanted to postpone the meeting. Damon was very sensible. Why don't I tell everyone to postpone the meeting for an hour? No, no, no. Emily quickly waved her hand. Don't waste everyone's time just because of me. Her eyes moved playfully, and she smiled gently. I have another way. Ten minutes later, the large meeting room was filled with the middle and upper echelons. This was their annual report. Everyone summarized the department they were in charge of to Eric. Everyone present was extremely nervous. Eric was famous for being cold and aloof and he did not show any emotion. Once he got angry, although he did not shout or curse, all he needed to do was to give a single look. No matter how old he was, no matter how famous he was, that person would be scared to the point of not daring to breathe. As long as the person who reported achieved the desired goal, he or she wouldn't be able to do better. His heart was beating fast, afraid that Eric would look at him reproachfully. Therefore, the atmosphere in the meeting room was tense. No one dared to look at this carelessly. They all looked at the report in their hands. After a while, the door to the meeting room opened. Everyone looked at it at the same time. Emily came in expressionlessly. Even though she was being watched by so many people, her expression did not change. Her aura was dignified and suppressed everyone. Everyone subconsciously held their breaths. But in the next second, when they saw the person Eric was following, they were so shocked that their jaws almost fell off. Who, who is this? Where was Damon? Since when did their CEO change his secretary? And the secretary had the guts to wear a mask when she came to the building? When did Damon make a mistake and get fired? At this moment, Damon, who was standing outside the conference room, silently wiped his sweat and was worried that he would be on the verge of losing his job. He helplessly closed his eyes. Emily followed behind Eric like a little puppy. Although this suggestion was proposed by her, it was just a whim. She was suddenly being watched by so many big shots. Subconsciously, she panicked and quickly forgot where she should go. She followed Eric, looking confused. After a while, she suddenly realized that she had gone to the wrong place. She hurriedly ran to the corner where she should be sitting. Eric looked at her deeply, and a smile appeared in his eyes. The higher-ups present had millions of questions running through their heads again. Am I seeing things? Their CEO was laughing? Just when they thought they had entered the fantasy world, Eric straightened his face and coughed lightly. Begin. At this time, they had no choice but to turn their attention back to their reports. Emily held the notebook. Before she came, Damon had already told her what he wanted to do. 
He did not do much because Eric could remember almost everything on the spot and give feedback in time. That was why she could not help but look at Eric, who was so clearly above everyone else. When he listened to other people's reports, his eyes would slightly narrow. His deep eyes outlined a beautiful shape. The light inside was complicated, but sharp. Serious people were the most beautiful. Emily had to admit that it was indeed true. Especially when Eric became serious. His originally handsome face was filled with concentration. It was as if there was a layer of light covering his face. It was so dazzling that it made people unable to look away. Emily could not help but look at him. The more she looked, the more moved she became. Only when the first person to stand up and report had finished reporting did she pull her mask off. She had to secretly warn herself that she came to do something serious this time. No, she could not indulge in beauty. The person who reported next seemed to be very dissatisfied with the performance of her department, so she did not have much confidence when she spoke. After hesitating for a long time, under Eric's powerful aura, she became even more nervous. Emily could not help but look at her and silently wiped her sweat for her. She could not help looking at Eric. She secretly took out her phone and sent a WhatsApp message. You scared her. Eric's phone buzzed. He looked down and smiled. The person who stood up thought their CEO was sneering because of the report. She was so scared that she shivered. Her legs were weak and her voice was trembling. Eric looked up. Under everyone's eyes, he said softly, Don't be nervous. The others were confused. Their president was comforting them. Especially the person standing there. He almost suspected that she had been scared to death just now. And now she was in heaven. Eric comforted her without changing his expression. I know your department's performance. Last month because of the weather, it was indeed affected. You have done your best to make up for it. There is no need to be nervous. The person standing was on the verge of tears. Many would say that their CEO was decisive and killing and was cruel and merciless. He would be the first to go up and fight with his life on the line. Emily quietly smiled and gave a thumbs up. Who is Adrian? For the rest of the day, the atmosphere in the conference room had eased considerably. None of the middle and upper employees present had ever held a meeting so easily. They did not know what was going on. The today's CEO on the surface didn't look any different from before, but there was no coldness in his eyes, and there was even a slight smile at the corner of his mouth. He seemed to be in a very good mood. Each of them was bolder than the other. One of them even told a joke, causing everyone to burst into laughter. The meeting ended in a relaxed manner. After the meeting ended, Eric did not leave immediately. Emily also sat obediently in her seat and waited for everyone to leave. When there were only two of them left in the meeting room, Emily immediately stood up and ran toward Eric with a smile. Aren't you afraid that I will listen to your secrets? When the time comes, I will enter Cooper's and compete with you for all the projects. Emily boasted shamelessly. Eric pinched her nose and put her fingers in his palm. He gently caressed her. All of them. Emily lowered her head and smiled. The two of them talked in their office for a while. After they went out, Emily gave the computer to Damon. I wonder if I did it correctly. Why don't you take a look first? Emily scratched her head in embarrassment. Damon did not have much expectation. After all, not everyone could handle taking notes during the meeting. It needed to be organized very clearly. Furthermore, Emily and Eric were busy communicating with each other the whole time. How could they still have time to concentrate on recording these things? But when he turned on the computer and looked at the documents that were densely packed but organized, he suddenly felt that he was on the verge of losing his job. You are very professional, Damon said sincerely. Emily smiled and looked up at Eric. 
The two of them went back to the office and chatted for a while. They had a meal together, and Eric drove her back to her house. A few days later, Emily officially joined Cooper under Adrian's arrangement. Naturally, Chloe was the first to object to this matter. During this period, Chloe had been busy cleaning up her mess. Her life was not easy, but Adrian was like a dog after a toy. He saw that she was not in a good state recently and took the opportunity to swallow up a lot of Chloe's influence at Cooper's. If she had not regained her senses so quickly, that son-of-a-bitch Adrian would have even found a reason to dismiss her most capable assistant at Cooper's. Chloe had no time to take care of herself, and even Eric didn't bother her. Who would have thought that just as she stabilized herself, she heard that Adrian was going to have Emily work at Cooper's. Immediately, she came back and threw a fit. Later at the Cooper family home, Chloe arrogantly sat on the sofa with Lorraine, her eyes staring straight ahead. Emily, on the other hand, stood on Adrian's side and leaned back a little. What do you mean? Chloe could not help but roar. I always thought that even though you are a treacherous person, you have brains. What is the matter? Has your brain been kicked by a donkey? You are letting her work at Cooper's? Cooper's was in a mess now. Not only was the competition outside stressful, but the internal forces were also divided into several factions. At this time, Emily was going to work there, but if the other party had any thoughts, there was an opportunity to take advantage of. Chloe could not swallow this anger. No matter what, she had to stop Emily from working at Cooper's. Adrian frowned. When Chloe spoke, there was no one to check her mouth. If Emily did not believe him, he would have been exposed by this woman several times already. Chloe, I hope you know who you are. Whether it is business or private matter, you do not have the right to order me to do anything. And when it comes to my arrangements, you must obey. Adrian's face was cold. Chloe was furious. She grabbed the vase on the table and threw it in Adrian's direction. The deafening sound of it crashing to the ground made everyone's heart skip a beat. Who is she? A murderer. She was in prison. I have no objections to you sending her to women's wear. However, this is Cooper's, a large corporation. What could such a useless and incompetent person do? What do you want her to be responsible for? Adrian, are you crazy? Adrian's face turned even paler. Emily stood behind him. Although her face was full of fear and nervousness, she was not worried at all. She even felt that the more Chloe made trouble, the better. Who was Adrian? A person who was more suspicious than anyone. If Chloe agreed to let her work at Cooper's, Adrian would be suspicious. However, they were currently opposing each other. Adrian would hate whatever Chloe liked. Of course, Adrian would do whatever Chloe objected to. However, Emily was not idle. She chose to add fuel to the fire and pull Adrian's sleeves. She said softly, Adrian, why don't I not? Chloe is right. If I go now, it will affect the reputation of Cooper's. Chloe glared fiercely and sneered. You still know yourself. If I were you, I would obediently stay at home and not go anywhere, lest I go out and make a fool of myself. But what she was most angry about was that she repeatedly embarrassed herself in front of Emily, someone who she looked down on the most. How could Chloe let her come back to Cooper's again? The most important thing was that she was now on par with Adrian. If Emily came, who would she lean on? She didn't even need to think about it. It must be Adrian. At that time, her situation would be even more forced. Of course, Adrian did not expect her to think of this. He looked coldly at Chloe and said, Chloe, you talk about Cooper's a lot. I think you think of Cooper's as your business in your heart. Emily may not have the qualifications to work there. Could it be that you don't have the qualifications to be a vice president either? Chloe immediately clenched her fist and looked fiercely at Adrian. Yes, her identity had always been like this. She lacked confidence, 
Therefore, she worked harder than anyone else to climb up the ladder. She craved the recognition of the Parker family business more than anyone else. But what about it? As long as Adrian revealed Emily's identity, she had nothing to say. This kind of innate status was something that she would never be able to get rid of, no matter how hard she tried. At this moment, she hated Emily to her core. She hated this woman who is destined to be a head taller than her since she was born. Chloe looked at Adrian in anger. Can you bear the consequences of letting her in? Adrian narrowed his eyes. What he had to bear was not the consequences, but the benefits. But Chloe would never know. Because what he wanted to reap was not only those who were quietly waiting for Emily's father to return, but also those who had worked hard for Chloe. Only by doing so would he be able to fully own Cooper's.